Dzień dobry. So uh, I was going to speak this morning about uh, Shiva Tattva based on your daughter's question last night, but I was asked um, by Namarasana to not do that until this evening because some devotees are coming that she wanted to um, have the, want them to have the opportunity to participate in that. I had to know that I wasn't able to sleep last night and a little tired. I was able to spend them several hours riding though, so that's uh, time well spent, I think. And um, so long and short of that is this morning I'll just ask for, for questions. We will be speaking on that Shiva talk tonight and then hopefully I'll, my internal clock will um, align and um, I'll be able to participate in the, the morning programs, etc. Continue with the classes and and um, we'll we'll read something at least in the, in, the, in the mornings from, from my writing as we have in, in previous years. So, any questions this morning? Yes, and welcome. Good to see you again. <laughs> I have a question regarding what's the difference or what is the relation between the process of Bhakti Yoga and the process of Sharanaya. Okay. Is this the same? Is this the same? Uh -huh. So the question is what is. Papa, in Polish, I will translate it. The question is what is the difference between the process of Bhakti Yoga and the process of Purukhavaya and Sharanaya? Places where Sharanagati is uh, mentioned, and it's um, something that Bhakti Vinod Thakur has um, emphasized um, in his writings and uh, uh, poems, songs, and so forth. And yeah. uh, which I have not seen elsewhere, uh, elsewhere he has um, identified it with, uh, with the Shraddha. Shraddha means, of course, faith. And, and um, what, I mean by, what I mean by that is that he, faith is kind of a intangible, uh, internal, subjective experience and he has uh, sought to externalize it and make it more tangible and by way of, and I think very uh, uh, insightfully, identifying it with Sharanagati. Sharanagati being the external expression of the internal Shraddha. And an example of that is found in the Gita. The Gita concludes with a uh, emphasis on Sharanagati. Actually, it, it concludes with, a, with an emphatic and uh, uh, emphasis, emphatic, well, uh, an emphasis on. Uh, Ananya Bhakti, Uttam Bhakti, Unalloyed Bhakti, which, of course, in the ninth chapter of the Gita, Krishna explained uh, that Uttam Bhakti to be the king of knowledge, Rajavidya, Rajakuyam, the king of secrets. Hmm? 
So in the, as you may know, in the 18th chapter, at the very near the end of, of the text, he says practically the exact same thing. Absorb your mind in me, become my devotee, make uh, pranam to me, so on and so forth, and, uh, and you will come to me. So he says this in the ninth chapter, he says it again in the 18th chapter. After he's given all the arguments to Arjun for why he should um, follow, why Arjun should follow him and so forth, he re reiterates what he said in the center of the book, in the ninth chapter. <clears throat> and these are then two instances where in the Gita, the theme, the central theme of unalloyed bhakti has been emphasized. Again, you find it in slightly different um, terminology. In the eighth chapter, nanyas chintayantamam yejanam priyabhasate tesham nityabhyuktanam yoga jemam bahamiham. So this theme comes up repeatedly in the Gita, and um, therefore that's what the Gita is about. It's uh, one of the classical ways of understanding what the text is about, what the was in the beginning, what it said in the end, what is the theme that's repeated throughout, and so on and so forth. It's a six-fold uh, process or method that's been uh, given in the scriptures for understanding sacred sacred texts. So these are a couple of the of the points. At any rate, repeatedly throughout the Gita, this emphasis is there on unalloyed bhakti. And significantly in the middle and and at, at the end, you could say. Um, and so right after that emphasis, Krishna gives his famous, which is probably a more famous statement, even for, for most persons, um, uh, then his uh, manmanabha manbhakto uh, verse, and, and that is uh, sarva dharman puritya ma mekam sharanam raja. There we find the word sharanam, and sharanam means surrender, so Krishna is calling for surrender. What he's saying there is, if Arjun, if you've understood me, um, let me. If you haven't, let me make it clear what what I'm speaking about here. The whole uh, gist of all that I've said is that you should become my devotee, and. Basically, that means you should absorb your mind in me, you should worship me, um, uh, do namaskar to me, and so forth. Um, and then to take it a step further in terms of the practical implications of that, or to say it in, a, in, a, in, a, in, the, in an opposite way. A lot, a lot of times the text will, will make a point positively and then make the same point negatively. You should do this and you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we can find that throughout the Bhagavatam, throughout the Gita and so forth. So here he says, you should worship me, mm -hmm. uh, become my devotee, pay respects to me. And then he says, what? Sarva Dharma Pritya And you shouldn't worship anybody else. Sarva Dharma Pritya means, Sarva Dharma means, what it really means is all the other gods and goddesses, you shouldn't worship them as they are worshipped in Varnashram Dharma. Hmm? Varnashram Dharma is the religious, social religious system for, uh, in which the all of our psychological and our, you know, let's say our emotional life, mental emotional life, and then our physical life of actions 
are connected, ourselves being a, a microcosm of, of material nature, materially speaking. As Krishna says, uh, it, the makeup of the world is earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, ego. This is a microcosm. Our psychological and biological sense of self is psychic and physical matter, respectively, in a, in a particular package, right? Karmic package. So that's a microcosm of the macrocosm of the world. And so in Varnashram Dharma, we connect the microcosm of our biological and psychological self with the entirety of, of nature. And all the gods and goddesses are, in one sense, projections of our own psychological, emotional, let's say, life and our active life. They, they, um, uh, that doesn't mean we made them up, um, so to speak. <laughs> speak. Um, we didn't make up our, uh, our material, uh, psychic and physical composition either. I mean, we were, we're part of it. I mean, we were the, active agent that, um, uh, that um, through karmic implications causes matter to form in a particular way around us and so forth. But uh, but anyway, the gods and goddesses, they all correspond with aspects of nature that correspond with our psychological and uh, biological lives, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so there is the uh, honoring of the gods and, and, and the goddesses and, and a, thereby a kind of a life, psychological and biological life that is uh, grounded in gratitude. And so that I, I, I worship the sun because the sun corresponds with my physical capacity to see. Mm -hmm. I worship the, uh, the, 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 the wind because that corresponds with my ability to speak. Vayu, Surya, uh, and, and, and so forth, right? So this is an elaborate system in Varnashram. I sometimes, uh, on other occasions, I should say, given the example that if you, you live in your house, and you, you, you turn a valve and you get water, you press a button and you get heat, and you flip a switch and you get light, you go to the mailbox, you get a bill <laughs> for heat, light, and water, or somebody at the other end that you have to acknowledge. If you don't pay the bill, then that light won't go on when you flip the switch, or the heat won't go on when you press the button, and so forth. So. Uh, the Varnashram system in a, in a, in a, is in one sense meant to teach us that we're dependent entities, that our, our sensual, mental, and even intellectual uh, life um, uh, are not uh, entirely uh, independent. Hmm? So we, we, we the, the, the the Hindu system really, while it tells us we're different from matter, from the point of view of Gyan, we're talking about karma and Barnashram, the point of view of Gyan, we're different from matter, it doesn't do so in such a way that, that separates us from nature in, as, for example, Descartes' uh, European perspective did, which is arguably the birth, the genesis of the environmental um, crisis predicament that we find ourselves in, um, where man, humanity becomes separate from nature and 
nature is just mechanical, including the uh, uh, animal life, plant life, bird life, the entirety of nature, and um, it, it, therefore there's no um, harm in pillaging and uh, raping nature, so to speak. It's just, it's a, it's a dead thing for our, for our use and so forth. So you don't find this in Hinduism, you find this distinction, kind of a, du kind of a dualism, uh, distinction between consciousness and matter. I mean, speaking just in general terms, but in a way that uh, doesn't have this negative imp impact that, for example, Cartesian dualism um, had with it. That, uh, uh, put us in this, um, had this, uh, started us down a road where the natural world lost its its sacredness. You have to understand, of course, in pagan Europe, nature was sacred. Hmm? Nature was sacred, but the religious spiritual orientation that was grounded in nature wasn't very developed enough that you could find your soul in it. Hmm? So, one of the virtues of, of Christianity was that you could, you could, you could find your, your soul, but at least in the way I'm talking about it, you got separated from nature. So in, anyway, in, in Hinduism, you don't find, you find the soul and, and a very developed idea, understanding of consciousness that you don't find in the Bible, for example. I mean, they, they got their soul idea more or less from, from Greece, Plato, and then there's the Thomists. So let me say Thomas, who got it from Aristotle. Um, um, so, you know, from the Gita's perspective, Christianity can have kind of a Rajasic understanding of, of, of consciousness, although the Platonic understanding that is uh, underlies much of Christianity is really a Sufic uh, understanding. Mm -hmm of the self. But in Hinduism, of course, it's very much developed. It's, 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 it's a, the Gita's first six chapters are all about that, and uh, the Upanishads, and so on and so forth. And it's very, very developed uh, theism, when arguably Gaudiya Vaishnavism, in, in the language of Siddha March, is the full-fledged theism coming to Swayam Bhagavan, Rasananda, uh, Akila Rasa Amrita, Muti, Rasa Raj, Krishna, and all possibilities of love and, and, and love and intimacy, and if you want, love and reverence, and, uh, and so on and so forth. A very developed idea, I would say, of the prayosian of, of the other world, hmm? the afterlife. It's, uh, it's really very much the the greater balance, almost, of, of, of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Hmm? Whereas, in a lot of the, a number of the other religious traditions, it's, it's kind of like vague. Hmm? Gaudiya Vaishnavism is a very specific uh, understanding of the nature of the possibilities that are varied hmm? in transcendence. Um, so, uh, so, the, the Varnashram, then, it, um, uh, this uh, uh, system uh, helped uh, us to live our lives in this world with gratitude towards nature. And I've sometimes said that nature has a secret about her, and the secret of nature is that she has a soul that is manifest in human life. It's not that there aren't souls or atmas in all forms of life, but in human form of life, this atma 
in Hinduism comes to the forefront. And as I often say, humans therefore are asking these qualitative questions and like why? It's not that the animals don't have qualitative experiences, but they're not of heat and cold and uh, pain and pleasure and so forth. Mm -hmm. They are having qualitative experiences, and we're knowing that more and more now. Uh, our, uh, I mean, we know it, but the, the, the Western world is coming to know it more. Recently, our um, Krishna Karnam published a book about the, um, what was it, the, the, the grieving, grieving of animals, grieving of animals. And there's a whole genre of these books. I recently, recently met with Krishna Chaitra Maharaj in Krakow, and he has been commissioned academically to write a book about um, uh, the sacred cow of India, the ethics uh, involved uh, with that. There's a very popular book, Hidden Life of Trees, that's come out a couple of years ago and so forth. And so there's a fair amount of empiric uh, scientific uh, research and observation about producing evidence that Unlike Descartes thought, animals aren't just machines that have no feelings. I mean, he thought that, and he used to seek to demonstrate that in ways that I won't repeat. Hmm. Um, but nonetheless, in human life, this qualitative life reaches a, a quality being um, relative to consciousness, quantity being relative to matter, hmm? physical stuff. Hmm? Of course, matter has a psychic dimension too, but it's really a, a subtle form of the same stuff that has the capacity to reflect consciousness and then it take, therefore takes on a quasi-subjective life of its own. Without proximity to consciousness, the Atma, of course, it, it doesn't do that. Hmm? Um, but at any rate, the point being, in human life, this consciousness is coming to the foreground so much that it's asking about itself. Like, what am I? What is the meaning? What, what is, when, I, when I say, what am I, it means, why do I exist? What is my purpose? Where do I fit? Hmm? This is like what human life is, this huge question. Why? Science, uh, modern science, uh, the predominant focus there it wants to do away with the why question. He said it's not necessary. Stephen Hawking said that we don't need philosophy anymore. Philosophy's dead. What he meant is, we can answer everything by how questions. Hmm? We don't need the why questions. There is no meaning, is the implication to life. There is no purpose to life. This is a very, like, one dimensional, uh, flat land perspective of life where everything, all the richness of emotional life is, re is reduced to something to dead matter, kind of just bouncing off it, its particles, bouncing off one another. And then, and then of course, you can't live that life if that's your philosophy. So you have to make up a life of meaning. And there are many of them, the scientific community, are proud and material philosophers naturalists that we're proud of saying, well, we don't need God for meaning. We can, we can make up meaning. Make, make up meaning of our own. Then why are you arguing with us? If, if you say we're making up religion, <laughs> and that's the what we've made up, then let's alone. You make up your own life. It's an illusion. 
in other words, all your, your, your concern for your, for your children, your, your joys, your, your, your sorrows, what your life is really all about, is all just an illusion. That what you think, what you think is important and right, it's just a made up thing. It's just a construct, a human construct. It's not really wrong or right to do anything because only just material particles are just bumping up against one another. There's no right or wrong to that. There's no right or wrong act. There's no right or wrong thought. So you can't live like that. Therefore, you have to make up rights and, and wrongs and, and get other people to agree, relatively speaking, and, uh, and your, your goods and bads are not, and your, your, even your reasoning. <laughs> this is thought to be the reasonable perspective, but that reasoning is not, has no grounding in, in, in reality. Therefore, it has no real power to pronounce on what is true. Reasoning is, again, just material particles bouncing off of one another. Your reasoning it has no more significance when you speak it than the raindrops falling on the roof. We have, a, we have an idea that gives reason a little more power. <laughs> and morality more power. Because we say there's an over, there's a dharma to the world. It has a purpose. Consciousness is it's consciousness driven, and in human life, this consciousness driven reality, the fact that it's consciousness driven is coming to the surface, and so consciousness is asking about itself: Why am I? What is my purpose? And so forth. Um, and so, therefore, I say, nature has a soul in that the Atma in human life is, com is coming out. The soul is coming out now. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the secret that nature holds, that consciousness underlies her movements, is, starts to be revealed. The, the secret door to that fact is opened in the form of human life. Mm -hmm. and so, um, meaning, purpose, why am I, um, so on and so forth, um, uh, is all the self asking about itself. And of course, if it's to get answers that are correct and comprehensive, it has to look not to nature, which is animated by consciousness, but to consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. Nature can answer other questions, but it can't answer comprehensively about consciousness. It can kind of indirectly point us to consciousness. There's an idea in Christianity that the natural world and the human life, human existence, in a general way, are reveal the truth that there's God. And then they say, and in a specific way, he appeared in Israel, I guess it was, or Jerusalem or something. So I guess that's the same place. He appeared in the Middle East. And then the full dispensation was revealed there, which is now to be taken everywhere. Hmm? And, and, and the, the general perspective that even Aboriginal people will have can be refined. That was their idea. Hmm? We don't disagree with them in some sense, that, but we, we think that the, that's their answer to why God didn't appear everywhere if he's God of everybody. Hmm? Of course, we say he appeared in different places at different times, and we include uh, Jesus as uh, Bhakti Vinod did as a Shaktivesh, teaching the Dharma in that place, in, 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 in 
uh, in, uh, relative to those people and so forth. And um, it's kind of a theistic perennialist perspective of Bhakti Vinod. Uh, it honors all the, the great uh, ego-facing traditions mm -hmm. while acknowledging at the same time that they, have, that they afford us different measures of penetration into transcendence. So, anyway, a very rich, uh, this is, this is the, what I would refer to as the Eastern exceptionalism. You may have heard the term European exceptionalism or they say in my country, American exceptionalism, outside of which European and American exceptionalism, one politician recently said, there's only barbarianism. Can you believe that? Yeah, it gets that bad in my country, in some of the quarters. Um, so, <laughs> um, Meanwhile, this European uh, American exceptionalism is really not something that you can bring everywhere because it takes the shape of colonialism and imperialism and, and there's, uh, it, it can only be, in one sense, economically as exceptional as, as it is, as far as I can understand, at the cost, at least how it's been going on at the cost of uh, the economic uh, prosperity of other places. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been involved in considerable uh, imperialism, exploitation, or uh, yes, and uh, colonialism, and so on and so forth. But comparatively, or by contrast, I would like to advocate an Eastern exceptionalism. The wealth of the Dharma of Hinduism, and especially the, the crown jewel of Dharma, the Prema Dharma of Srimad Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Prema Pumarta Mahan, Panchama Purushartha, Prem Prayojana. So rich. And the Mahaprabhu there said, you know it, right? Take this rich, riches, hmm? this wealth of um, Prem Dharma, my dispensation, Chaitanya Shishti, hmm? uh, Prem Sankirtan. It was, uh, who said it? So it was Sarvabhoma? Sarvabhoma Bhatti. Gopinath. Gopinath, brother-in-law of Sarvabhoma, standing on the roof of the Jagannath temple. And all of Mahaprabhu's associates are coming to Puri for the first time for the Ratha Yatra to have this uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, their Nimai Pandit's association again. And on the roof, Pratap, Pratapurudra Maharaj, Gopinath the Charge, Sarvabhoma but the Charge. And uh, Gopinath is saying, I guess, and Pratapurudra Maharaj is saying, and who, who's that? Who is that? What, that person? And what are they doing? They were coming in Sankirtan. Hmm? They were the, just a, 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 an embodiment of ecstasy. And here the king, Raj Pratapurudra, as you know, he had seen every kind of worship that there was. He was the king of Jagannath Puri. Jagannath means Lord of the Universe. He worshipped even by the Tantric Buddhists as one of their deities. So all types of religious spiritual disciplines came to Jagannath Puri to worship. But he had never seen anything like this. And Gopinath said, yeah, this is Chaitanya Shrishti. This is the Shrishti Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shrishti means creation. Shrishti Leela usually refers to the, the manifestation of the world under the auspices and influence of, of Mahavishnu. Hmm? But he said, this is Chaitanya Shrishti, the creation of Chaitanya. It's called Prem Sankirtan. 
This has never been seen in the world before. This is his dispensation, his, his creation. You can imagine how wide-eyed they were and how their hairs were standing on end to see that they had seen something of this in Mahaprabhu. Sarvabhama had seen, the king had seen, they'd been converted and now all in, in, in mass their uh, associates of Mahaprabhu will come. There was a Dweta charge. There was Nityananda Roy. Hmm? Shivananda Sain and so forth. <laughs> I mean, it was a very powerful, powerful moment in the life of the king and the life of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. What kind of bhakti samskars they got from that indelible influences on the uh, uh, impressions on their chitta. Just to hear about that, we, 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 it, it make a strong impression on us, it ground us in, in, in bhakti sadhana. So this brain, Mahaprabhu said, it should be given to the world. We have Eastern exceptionalism. And, it, and, the, and the beauty of it is that it can be shared everywhere. Hmm? It can go everywhere. And you don't even have to change your religion, as Prabhupada said. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we are Christians. We are Buddhists. Hmm? That's right. We believe in it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And we believe in love your God with all your heart. Bhakti Vinod said it like this. He said, Jive doi Krishna nam Sarva dharma sar Jive doi Love your neighbor as yourself. And Krishna nam, nam kirtan means you have to do kirtan, not with a tongue. Not with the ears, but with the heart. Hmm? Give, give your, your, your bhakti is something you, you 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 do something and give the results to Krishna. You give yourself to Krishna. You don't give the things that you that you the fruits of what you desire to Krishna. You desire Krishna, and you do sharanagati before him. Hmm? Alone, hmm? not the gods and the goddesses, all of whom are identified with your biological, psychological composite makeup. That Varnashram identity needs to be deconstructed. Krishna says, Sarvadharma Prityaja. It's a beautiful system to live with gratitude in the world. Hmm? And it's a beginning of sorts, right? And we offer our regard to that Varnashram Dharma that is manifested directly from Krishna himself. Chaptogarna Mayashastam. Mayashastam. It is my creation. Chaptogarna Mayashastam Guna Karma Vibhagasa. What does he say next? Hmm? Chatur Varna Mayashrishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasam. Vibhagasa. Oh, I can't remember. I'm so getting older. But he says, This is my, crea my, my creation, consisting of the four uh, Varnas hmm, determined by Guna and Karma. It comes from me. Then he says, but you can't find me inside of it. That's what the second two lines are, the implication. Of, They're my creation, but I'm not, I can't be found there, in it. You have to come out of that. Because to know me, you have to love me. You can't just thank me. And you can't just thank me in the form of the gods and goddesses that are only partial representations of myself. I am love himself. I am the king of love. I'm Rasaraj. 
Hmm? So if you want to associate with me, you have to love me entirely. And I will love you. I want to love you entirely. I don't want to force you to do that. Hmm? My Barna Ashram system is, a, is, 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 is not even... You, you, you can't know me in that. You might come to Vaidhi Bhakti through that, because in the context of worshipping all the gods and goddesses in Varnashram, there's also worship of Vishnu. So there's a little bit of Bhakti hmm? in Varnashram that makes the whole thing work, makes the whole system efficacious. And it's possible, in remotely, Rupa Goswami admits that through that you could possibly come to Vaidhi Bhakti, but not to Rag Bhakti. And what does Krishna say about Vaidhi Bhakti, aimed as it is, as a discipline unto itself, towards a prayogen of love in awe and reverence? He said, It does nothing for me, it, it's not about me. Hmm? It doesn't turn me on. Hmm? I, if you want to know me, I'm telling you who I am, it says, I, I am, I am the, for, the very form of, of the perfect object of love. Hmm? And my counter whole is the perfect love. Mahabhav Rasaraj Duyekuru. He is Chaitanya, and this is, and this is Chaitanya, our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sriman Mahaprabhu. He is Rasaraj, Krishna, in Mahabhav Radha. The two combined in one. Hmm? Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahiyam, Rupanuga Jhane Rajivan. And this is the, this is the, the, the life, the Jhane Rajivan of, of the followers of Rupa, Rupa Goswami, who says, if you want this kind of bhakti, you can only get it by Mahat Kripa. Mahat Kripa means the, the contact and, and thereby the grace of, of a Mahatma who, who himself or herself has, is driven by this uh, kind of bhakti. Hmm? So, this is very different than Varnashram, as virtuous and wholesome as Varnashram is, as I said, in life of reverence of, of, of nature, a religious life, acknowledging the Godhead in, in, in the diving the trainer, the con divine controlling, uh, overseeing factor and influence, uh, in, in everything, with every, with every move I make, every breath I take, I, Varnashram is, someone's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> and he has many forms and shapes, and, I, and all those forms and shapes, I'm worshiping them. I'm reverence, uh, acknowledging them. I'm paying the bill hmm, to keep the lights on to keep the water flowing, to keep the heat going. Hmm? I'm showing my gratitude. I'm paying my dues. Hmm? This is Varnashram. You can see, it's not love. It's some kind of bargaining. Hmm? We, 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 can, we, can, we can make a little of it by way of comparison to bhakti, but it is great. It is a great thing, very charming, very beautiful. It, again, it's to live in the world, just treading softly. After all, if, if everything you do, you would say, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, excuse me, thank you, thank you. This, this is Varnashram Dham. It's a word of worshiping everywhere. Before you eat, before you breathe, before you wake, before you go to sleep, everything. It's, it's, many, it's many rules. 
and Sanatan Goswami and he's at the onset of Brihad Bhagavatam he says, oh, for the day, be free from all these rules. <laughs> and just love Krishna. That is the message of Bhagavatam. Hmm? <laughs> so Sarvadharma and Prithyaja, Krishna said, I mean, this is coming from Krishna's mouth, so we're only saying his words. He said, Varnashram is mine, how can you criticize him? But we're not really, but he also said something else. Hmm? He said, Varnashram comes from me, but me, myself, cannot be found in there. Hmm? And therefore, give it up. Give up the worship of all the gods and all the goddesses. And, and mommy come. Sharanam du sharanagati to me. Ekam, alone, only, just me. Sarva dharman purityaja. It's our acharyas have understood the word to, to, to reject the all other dharmas, to include the the distant and quiet, very quiet outer reach of Barnashram. It's about Dharma. It's about uh, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Moksha. That's what Barnashram is. The, the point being, this is the renunciation, the far reach of Barnashram. You can get. Go, be, go, go beyond it. Hmm? Know thyself. Hmm? The Atma. Hmm? You become quiet, contemplative, in, inactive. And yes, it's part of our tradition, and there's a few naked people who do that, <laughs> living way out in the, in the Himalayas where it's gold. And, uh, Son, my dear son, be religious, but not that religious. I mean, yes, that's our. This is one thing, at least about Hinduism and Varnashram. It's got mysticism inherently built within it. Hmm? Varnashram, religious, the religious orientation to life can ironically be at odds with the mystical implications of it. Therefore, the Jewish people, they, for example, they, they had something to do with the, with the, 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 the sacrifice, the crucifixion, crucifixion of, the, of Jesus of Nazareth. Hmm? They couldn't recognize their, the essence, the Kabbalic <laughs> essence of their own tradition, the mystical truth that was it's part of the perennial philosophy of ego denying and, and following me, as Jesus said, just follow me. <laughs> no thanks, we, we like you, but we're not gonna follow you. I mean, literally, and head out to the desert or whatever, you know, without packing a lunch, and, and just depend hmm, on, uh, on, on the God that you're, 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 you're talking about. Hmm? He tried to show them yogically, he exists. He tried to show them yogically. Hmm? Whether he rose from the dead or not, well, I guess that's an argument. It was certainly a great miracle if he did. It was sold in Europe. And um, um, sold a lot of tickets to that, to that show. But I, I think he did, he, I think we could be more sure that he, that, he, that, he, that he said something that even doesn't make that, it, that doesn't even matter. He said, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, <laughs> he should be followed. Just, who could say that? You understand? He was on the cross, and he said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I, maybe, maybe the other guy who was on the other cross that they let off heard that and said, and I think he became, he became a Christian. What was his name? There was somebody else who was also being crucified. And they, yeah, the Romans asked, which one 
Barabbas? Barabbas? Barabbas. 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 Nazareth, the Jesus of Nazareth, or Barabbas? Barabbas! And he said, and Barabbas heard, my father, forgive them for they know what, not what they do. While he's being crucified, that just absolutely, that was like, what kind of person is this? He should be followed. Hmm? Even if he appears to die like everybody else, he should be followed for the life that he lived like that. With that kind of feeling about enemies hmm? who would treat him so unkindly and torture him. He had no enemies. What kind of yogi was he? What kind of adept, spiritual adept was he? We don't need a miracle that he, whether he appeared from death or not. What he was doing when he was living. Hmm? What he said. Hmm? And he said, as I said earlier, love your neighbor like yourself. The Gita says the same thing in the sixth chapter. The highest yogi is he who sees the suffering of others as if it's own. The Gita says, love your neighbor like yourself. That's yoga. Bhaktivinoda said it again. Jive doi Krishna nam sarvadharma sar. Jive doi. Show kindness to others. It means love your neighbor like yourself and do kirtan, which is again an exercise of the heart, which means to love your God with all your heart and soul. And that is kirtan. Hmm? So we're Christians. Hmm? We're Buddhists. The Buddha said, the problem in life, the world is about suffering. The problem is desires for things that foster suffering. Attachment. We agree, Krishna said the same thing. He said, attachment is the womb from which suffering is born. We agree with that wisdom. We are Buddhists. We are ready to sit under the tree. Hmm? But it's hard for us because we have some scar for Prem Dharma. So we have to get up and dance hmm? and do this dispensation, Parupakar, shared everywhere. Hmm? This Eastern exceptionalism, make it, make it known. Hmm? Hmm? So Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Pritya. Give up the prema. Give up the worship of all the gods and goddesses, Varnashram, and give up moksha. Also, hmm? if you do Dharma Varnashram right, if you make a sufficient inquiry into how to be religious, Atato Dharma Jignashu. That is the beginning of the Purva Mimamsa, the Uttar Mimamsa, Purva Mimamsa. You know, the Vedic literature is, is divided into two sec basic sections. Right? What did Krishna tell Arjuna about that? He said, Tribunya Vishaya Veda. Three quarters is one section of the Veda. It's all about. Um, Pravriti mark, acquisition. Trigunya Vishaya Veda, Nistrigunya Bhavarjana. And then there's one the other part. Hmm? It looks smaller, but it's bigger than the other three parts. Hmm? First three parts are all about acquisition. How to take and say thank you. <laughs> Did you say thank you? <laughs> say thank you. This is Varnashram. Say thank you. Okay, I can take it. <laughs> this is a kind of a childish uh, approach to religion. Say thank you. Okay. Hmm? And then you can take so many things. Hmm? And for moksha, for gyan, hmm? you don't have to say thank you because you just you give everything up. You give up everything. Just be quiet now. 
Guai. Sit. But that giving up is bigger. The more, the less is more. Right? To know thyself. To know that, that I am, and what the significance of that is, is much bigger than to to know that I am this or I am that, or to think that I am this or that, which is a, is a changing thing, which is here today and gone tomorrow. That I am, that's huge. That I am this or I am that. I may be male, I may change my gender to a female, I may be Polish, I may move to Chicago and become an American, uh, I may change my, my national identity, my gender, my political affiliations, I am a socialist, I am a capitalist that can change, but in all this changing of this and that, I am this and that, I am never changes. I am, that's bigger than all of this is and all of that, neti neti. Not this, not that. I am. So that is much bigger than all the rest. The Upanishads are bigger in quality because they're talking about a qualitative thing, the self, rather than the quantitative section of acquiring things that we will. That the greater balance of the Vedas is about. Krishna says that Stray Guni Vishaya Veda, Nistray Guni Bhavarjana, Nid Vandavanita Nitya Sattasto, Nid Yoga Chematmavan. Nid Yoga Chematmavan. When we hear that line, our mind immediately goes, Anantas Chintayam Tomam Yejana Paripasate, Tesha Nitya Vyukdanam Yoga Chemam, Bahami Aham. We find that statement there properly understood in the second hand that he's talking about brain dharma there. Hmm? He says, give up the three sections, go to the one section about consciousness and look deeply inside of there. Yoga Chemam Bahami Hum. Don't depend on the gods and don't depend on yourself. Don't depend on the gods. That means don't depend on your biological and psychological self to maintain you, to take care of you, to satisfy you, to fulfill you. And don't depend on yourself, your Atma either. Hmm? That's knowledge of the Atma, that's sattvic. And knowledge of me, that is Nirguna, that is in the other world. Hmm? And there the wealth of yourself can be found. To separate yourself from the false wealth of this world and to know yourself is it's like being a jewel, being a diamond in the coal underneath a mountain. Isn't it? Diamonds are underneath mountains in the coal. I'm a diamond. Sitting underneath a mountain. Bhaktis, take it out. Put it in a ring. Hmm? Put it in a necklace. Let it shine. Bring it in contact with the Sarup Shakti. Hmm? And then, what is, what is it? The beauty of its potential. Hmm? And its power now. In connection with the Sarup Shakti, it has the power to overwhelm Krishna. What to speak of? Take off the mountain that's covering the jewel. Hmm? So the riches of Prema Dharma. This is what Krishna is advocating in the Gita, and he says, after emphasizing it, Manmanabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhavabhav
Varnashram. <laughs> Everyone is doing Vaidhi Bhakti. Nanda Maharaj is worshipping Narasimha, Shaligram. Hmm? They're Vaishnavas. They're wearing the tilak. They're all doing the, living within the Varnashram. Hmm? They're all, they know we're in the afterlife. They have some sense. Hmm? And loving Krishna. These are all just props, of course. Hmm? To give some shape for loving Krishna. Hmm? But the implication is further that whatever you could get from Varnasha, whatever you could get from through Moksha and Gyanmark, whatever you could get from Vaidhi Bhakti and more is all there hmm? in Braj Bhakti. So, Krishna is saying, love me, and, and, and how you do that, surrender to me. What he's trying to do there is create faith in Arjuna, in him alone. This is bhakti. The, the argument of Krishna in the Gita, that I am, I am, what does he say in the 10th chapter? Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pavartate. I'm everything. Everything comes from me. Saying it in a couple of ways. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pavartate. Iti mat baba jante mam mudabhava samamita. Mudabhava samamita. Again, he's advocating this. Uttam bhakti. If you want to do uttam bhakti in the fullest sense of the term, you have to find Swami Bhagavan. If you want to give entirely, you have to find the person who can take entirely. Even Narayan cannot take everything. If you want to have friendly or romantic love with Narayan, he cannot take it. I cannot take it. He send you to Goloka. Ram cannot take it. He will send you to Goloka. And if you go to Goloka, like Gopu Kumar in Dwarka, Dwarakesh can I take it? Hmm? Krishna. He sent it to Raj. There, the full taker, the full enjoyer, the center. Hmm? Krishna. So, Krishna wants to awaken faith in Arjuna, hmm? in himself, in this philosophical argument, this tattva, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Hmm? He is Bhagavan Swayam, Him alone. Worshipping Him alone includes all that you could get from worshipping all the gods. So he wants to awaken faith in Him. And faith then is what? That which gives the eligibility to tread the path. So faith in, in this tattva, in this scriptural argument, in the Sambandha Gyan, of bhakti, therefore we sometimes refer to it as Shastriya Shraddha. His faith is honed by the scripture. And this means the Bhagavad scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the very words of Krishna, the very description of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the vessels of love for Krishna in Vatsalya, in Sakya, in Madhurya, that are the centers, the three centers of the Bhagavatam that correspond with the three dispositions of Krishna, the son of Nisabhishoda, the cowherd boy, the lover of Radha. You can see if you study the 10th Canto, these three aspects of Krishna they are emphasized. So you have several chapters in the Dhamadar, concerned with the Dhamadar Leela, beautifully bringing out this Vatsalya window of opportunity to go through, beginning with Agasur Leela, extending through the Dainakasur Leela, and the killing of uh, Kaliya Leela, and uh, the killing of, what was his name, who tried to become a cowherd. Hmm. Palamba, the Sakiras center, and then the center of the center, the Raspancha Jai, five chapters, 
about the romantic life of Krishna. Hmm? So our, Krishna is trying to awaken in Arjuna this faith hmm, that will get, make, give him eligibility to tread the path. And Bhante Manotapura has reasoned that that faith takes the shape externally of Sharanagati. And the word Sharanagati comes in that verse, Sarvadharma Pradeja Mami Kam Sharanam. This is the end of the Gita. And the Bhagavatam begins where the Gita ends. In the second verse of the Bhagavatam, it is stated what? The exact same thing. Dharma Projita Kaitavotra Paramuni Matsaranam Satam. Dharma Projita Sarva Dharma Prithyaja. Dharma Projita. To give up the Kaitava Dharma. It's, 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 it's a cheating of the self, what the possibilities, the prospect of the self is. Hmm? Varnashram doesn't afford us that. In that sense, it's kaitava. The desire, the desire is kaitava. The desire for moksha, the desire for material acquisition. They cheat you out of all that you could have, all that you could be. Dharma projita kaitavotra. This, this is all, this baptism says, this book has nothing to do with those things. The only reason they're brought up is to tell you that. <laughs> and to show, look at them in contrast to what it is about. Dharma projita kaitavotra paramo nirmat saranam satam. It's about those kind of people who are satam nirmat saranam. Without any envy, truth, thoroughly honest, Persons, these are synonyms for the devotee. Satam, Dharma Pojit Pojit Kaita Gotra Paramo Niramat Saranam Satam Vijam Vastavamatta Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. Concerned about the tapa, the, 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 the troubles of the world, they are uprooted. Trayon Mulanam. Srimad Bhagavate Mahamanakite Tumba Padavishma Sadyo Rida Adirudite Avarudite Trakiti Bihi Susu Suis Takshinad. Its power is such that just hearing about it will arrest Krishna. If you hear about that and you develop faith in it from hearing it, that faith in its maturity. This is shraddha, nirguna shraddha. Nirguna shraddha. There's shraddha in different modes of nature, as described in the Gita. And Uddhava Gita takes it a step further. By, it's not that it's not there in the Gita, but emphasized that there, there, there's radhas, tamasic, radhas, sattva faith, and nirguna faith. And nirguna shraddha, Krishna says, that is faith in me. In me. And so, Sharanagati, this is where the Gita ends, this is where the Bhagavad begins, it's the door, it's the, it's the dramatic stage on which the drama of Krishna Lila will be performed in your heart. You have to erect that stage, Sharanagati. So Sadhana Bhakti is about erecting that stage and cultivating one's faith. Hmm? And Bhakti Nod is beautifully explained, Sharanagati, as being sixfold. And, and, and this he's, of course he's, is, is emphasized in, in Ramanuja Sampradaya, also Sharanagati. Just to answer your question from that perspective, what's the difference between Bhakti Yoga and Sharanagati? Ramanuja says, if you can't do Bhakti Yoga, just do Sharanagati. He says, Bhakti Yoga requires, of course, this is Ramanuja's perspective. It's a little different than the way we look at it. But Ramanuja looks at Bhakti as a, as a like, like this really post-liberated, you have to have pro process through, 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 through Dharma. I was saying Dharma Jignasu. If you inquire sufficiently about Dharma, get the answer in the Purva Mimamsa, 
act religiously, wholesomely, then you become qualified for Brahma Jignasu. The, the, the second part of the the Uttama Mamsa, the latter part, the Upanishadic part, is the Vedanta Sutra. It's all about Brahma Jignasu, not Dharma Jignasu, not inquiring about how to be religious, but how to be spiritual. Hmm? Right? Our inquiry is how to be uh, Rasa Jignasu, how to taste Rasa. This is a bold. How will we become qualified for that? To inquire about spiritual life and pursue it, first you've got to become perfectly religious. So what do we have to do? As I've already explained, you have only one thing. You have to meet the right person. It's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> That's how to get anywhere in life. Hmm? You may be a great musician, but if you don't know the right people, you'll never be on the billboard. Hmm? And you may not be that good, hmm? like a Madonna or something like that, as a musician anyway, that you can be, if you know the right people. Anyway, she got her way, made her way there, but it's who you know, it's not what you know. And this holds true in bhakti. Hmm? If you know someone who, who, who is excited about these ideas, <laughs> then you're in good company. Hmm? He's looking. She's looking for someone to share these ideas with. Hmm? What do you think? Hmm? How does that, how, how do you respond? They want, they, such people want to call it. Bodayam tasparas param tushyanti cha ramanti cha. They take great pleasure in discussing these things with others, with other like minded persons. By which tushyanti cha ramanti cha. I wish to share each other. You can attain Sambandha Rupa Bhakti by uh, Raman Ticha, by which you can attain Kama Rupa Bhakti. Hmm? So this Bhakti Mnod is explained that this, 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 this Sharanagati hmm, is the outer expression of faith and uh, as I say, it's, it's, it's uh, prominent in Ramanuja Sampradaya. In Ramanuja Sampradaya, you have, to, you have to become, do the karma, do the dharma, pr pr become um, proficient in the religious realm, come to Gyan, and then there's Bhakti Yoga. So he's emphasizing the post-liberated nature of Bhakti, its capacity to take you to the Nirgun, which karma, And dharma, governed by rajas, cannot. Which jnana, governed by sattva, cannot. Hmm? So his bhakti yoga is high. And therefore he says, if you can't do bhakti yoga, because you can't qualify yourself through dharma and, 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 and jnana, then just do sharanagati. So he, this is how he differentiates between Sharanagati and Bhakti Yoga. And then there are examples of people who just did Sharanagati. They just surrendered themselves to Krishna and quickly attained the ideal in Ramanuja Sampradaya. So it's a very beautiful thing. So there may be outcast people like us outside the Varnashram with no hope whatsoever of practicing Varnashram. I'm qualified in, in, in all respects. We can do Sharanagati. Ramanuja just says, come on in. Do Sharanagati and take the, 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 the back door in. Hmm? But in Gaudiya Sampradaya, it's a little, it's looked at a little differently. And as I say, Bhakti, it, it is, you ask, what is the difference between Sharanagati and Bhakti Yoga? Sharanagati, Rupa Goswami describes, is an anga, a limb of the angi, the body of bhakti. So doing Sharanagati, according to Rupa Goswami, is one anga of bhakti. But this anga of bhakti, Sharanagati, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has underscored it and emphasized it, hmm? written about it, poems about it, songs about it. Hmm? 
And he has explained that it is uh, in explaining the sixfold nature of Sharanagati. Anukulya sasam kalpa pratikulya sevadam. Rakshakcha, rakshakcha. Rakshakshati vishvashvo gupkrit vevaranam tata. Atmanik chepa kalpane shadvidha sharanagati. Shadvidha. The sharanagati is sixfold. Anukul pratikul, accept what's favorable for, for bhakti, reject what's unfavorable for bhakti. This will very quickly take you out of your mind's determinations as to what is good or what is bad. The mind's determined, this is good, this is bad. This is good, this is bad. Now we have a new criteria. If it's good for bhakti, it's good. Even if my mind says it's bad. If it's unfavorable for bhakti, even if my mind says it's favorable, you might like that. We give that up. We have a new criteria. See how quickly you will come, rise above the dualities of the mind, if you embrace this anukul particular aspects of Sharanagati. And the mood behind this that Bhakti Vinod Thakur speaks about is, uh, what do we say, pratigya? A promise. A promise. This is the spirit behind it. A vow. I will, I will, I will live, for example, within the parameters given by my guru at the time of diksha. I make a commitment like this. This is the mood behind becoming accomplished in the, this aspect of Sharanagati. And then Rakshikshatati Vishvashvo. This is confidence, Vishvas. Confidence, Krishna will protect me. Mm -hmm. This, uh, uh, and, uh, and the mood behind that is, is this, that Krishna will, is my protector, no one else. I'm not praying to the gods or goddesses to protect me, but only Krishna. Mm -hmm. The mood behind it is, Confidence, confidence, vishvas, kind of firm faith, confidence, vishramba. Krishna will protect me. And they marched into the mouth of Agasura. They were, shar they were premikas, but they were also sharanagatas, because as I said, that prema dharma, the leela, is performed on the stage of Sharanagati. So Krishna's coward friends, for example, writing about this now, they marched into the mouth of Agastur. They said, is it a mountain? Is it a snake? And they, it was sin, sin itself, sin himself, Agha, personified. They turned sin itself into a playground to explore. And entered the mouth of sin without any concern. They were Mami Kam Sharanam Sarva Dhanam Pridaja Mami Kam Sharanam Rasha Aham Tom Sarva Papi Vyo Moksha Yesha Mimas They had no worry about sin. Krishna says, you surrender to me alone and as far as sin goes, you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. There are any implications of not following the Varnashram by which you could get bad karma, don't worry about that. Hmm? They, they just, they thought, hmm? they thought, it's a mountain cave, but let's pretend it's a snake's mouth and go inside. Hmm? Something like that. In their imaginative absorption in play, hmm? the demon appeared there by the influence of Leela Shakti, so that their play would be interrupted and they could play out the 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 the, the, um, the text, the plot of the leela that had been planned the night before to leave early and have a picnic lunch. 
They got so absorbed in playing that they forgot to eat. So the Lil Shakti arranged for Agasura to come. Hmm? For a mountain, a cave, to appear like a, like a snake. Or maybe it was a snake. Hmm? They turned the mountain into a snake, a python, and went into his mouth. They turned him. Yeah, it's such as the power of the bhakti. And of course, they thought, and if it's a snake, Krishna will protect us. They were right. Hmm? But they also, of course, did not have just the confidence, Vishwas, of a Sharanagata. They had confidence, Vishwamba, of their love for Krishna and his love for them. The Sakyarasa Ibrati is, is characterized by this. They are sure. Krishna loves me more than anybody else. Every one of them is right. Hmm? They have this kind of confidence. This is the, this is the pradhan hmm? uh, of, of Sakyarati. So, we just, it also is sometimes described as the Swarup Laksham of Sharanagati or sometimes the next aspect of Sharanagati, limb of Sharanagati, Gopkritve Varanam Sata, Krishna is my maintainer. That is thought to be the Surup Laksham, the primary characteristic of Sharanagati. So you have a primary characteristic, then you have marginal characteristics. Hmm? So either one of these are, are sometimes both of them together or one or the other are considered to be the, the Swarup Lakshan, the primary characteristic. And, and I, I think you can understand that because it's a Krishna will protect me, Krishna will maintain me. Maintenance is probably more so the Swarup Lakshan because maintenance is an ongoing thing. Protection is, is something that at times is required. Mm -hmm. So, go Pritve Varanam Tata. Krishna is my maintainer. So the mood behind this, to be cultivated, hmm? Bhaktivedanta Thakura, is, is, is dependence, a sense of dependence. Hmm? I'm depending on Krishna for my maintenance. Hmm? Of course, that is to be cultured in, in, relative to your adhikar, whether you're in different ways, if you're a householder, or if you're a monastic, and so forth. But, and then, of course, then there's Atmanic uh, 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 self resignation uh, and humility. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this self resignation is like is like the mood for, behind this is like like an animal, like a domestic animal. I, under the maintenance and protection of Krishna, wherever he takes me, I, I go. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And humility. The mood behind the humility is humility. <laughs> Karpanye. Mm -hmm. So, this is, this is Sharanagati, the sixfold. Mm -hmm. And it's the outer expression of Shraddha. So, for our Shraddha, which is faith informed, by, an, by scripture and aroused by the scriptural argument, heard and explained through Sadhu Sangha, hmm? this, then the birth of my bhakti, take, the birth of my bhakti takes the shape of Shraddha, and that Shraddha takes the shape of Saranagati. Hmm? So as I began, this kind of intangible, subjective, internal faith is externalized hmm? in the theology of Bhakti Vinod Bhaktapur in the form of Sharanagati, so that you can look for these things practically hmm, and measure the growth of your faith. And Samana Bhakti is about growing that faith so that this dramatic stage, as I say, of Sharanagati, Sharanagati can be erected hmm, so that the drama of Krishna Leela will appear on it. They have a saying in English that coming to a theater near you some movie. It's coming soon to a theater near you. 
So if you want the drama of Krishna Leela to come to a theater near you, that theater has to be in your heart. And in order for that to happen, you have to erect the stage, the dramatic stage, the altar of Sharanagati. Mm -hmm. So sadhana bhakti is very much about Sharanagati and bhava bhakti, therefore it's about Well, by contrast, I should say, Bhava Bhakti is about longing. Mm -hmm. Longing. Mm -hmm. Lolo, Lolo Samayi. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some overlapping, obviously. Anyone who is longing in Bhava Bhakti is a Sharanagata. And any Sharanagata is going to have some longing, especially in the higher stages of Sadhana Bhakti, in Ruchi and Asakti. Mm -hmm. But then Bhava Bhakti is entirely about longing. Understand longing, lolasin, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very qualified longing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it doesn't need anything else. It drives itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, in, in rag bhakti we have shraddha mai loba, shraddha, which is the adhikari that is uh, uh, infused with with with, with longing. Mm -hmm. But just as there are developments of, shar, of, of Shraddha, as Rupa Goswami explains, so there's developments of Lobamayi Shraddha. Shraddha is our eligibility, so there's the Kanishta level of Shraddha, where the Shraddha is komal, soft, pliable. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Madhyam level of Shraddha, where it's firm, but not fully informed by the scriptural argument, sensibilities, and so forth. And then there's Shraddha of an Uttama nature that's fully informed, mm -hmm. which then makes one fully qualified to tread the path that requires only Shraddha, only the faith. It doesn't require you to be a celibate or any of the other things, for example, that Jnana and Yoga require. They require faith too, faith plus this, plus that. But for bhakti, only faith, it's just power. Hmm? But now, we are rag bhaktas, so our faith is going to be infused with lobo, because the reason that we're here is because we want to go to Braj. As I said the other day, Jiva Goswami said, when you get the diksha, the mantra the Guru gives you, you should think, my Guru has given me this mantra, that I may perfect its, the meditation, the japa of this mantra, which amounts to attaining a life in Braj as a gopa or a gopi. So, obviously there has to be some long there. Hmm? Prabhupada just always say, you know, we ought to read the first nine cantos before we read the tenth canto. We used to say like that. So one of his disciples asked him, well, why did you give us the Krishna book before you gave us any of the Bhagavatams? Which is all about the tenth canto. And Prabhupada chuckled and he said something like, um, just to give me a little appetizer. <laughs> An appetizer. Hmm? Krishna of Vrindavan. Hmm? Uh, because we want to go there. We have a little loba. Huh? When I was younger, one devotee told me, you know, most devotees don't go to Goloka and Vrindavan, they only go to Vaikuntha. I couldn't, I couldn't, I wept. I, I couldn't sleep. I went before the deities and I, I said, it can't be true. And I found out it wasn't true. <laughs> Much to my delight. So, we, so the, we have to grow the Shraddha, we want to grow the Loba Mai Shraddha. Hmm? And as that, that Loba infused Shraddha matures, hmm? it, 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 it will mature as, as Anarthas are removed. Hmm? It will be removed as, as, our, as, it, as our Shraddha is informed by the scripture through good association. Hmm? and so forth, uh, then we will be able to apply ourselves 
in relation to all the practices of, uh, of Raga Bhakti, which Rupa Goswami basically gives us is threefold. Hmm? Um, but we aren't going to go into all that at this time. So, that is the relationship between Sharanagati and Bhakti Yoga. <laughs> Sharanagati ki ja. Bhakti Yoga ki ja. Bhut Premanam. Hari Bhut. What's the time? So, we'll save questions for this evening. Okay. Well, tonight we'll do the Shiva Tattva. Anyway. <laughs> Keep your questions for another session. Shri Gornitananda Kijai, Gorbhaktamanda Kijai.